Asthma is a chronic inflammatory disease of the airways, which leads to airflow limitation and increased sensitivity of asthma triggers. Such triggers cause shortness of breath, breathing trouble, and other symptoms. An estimated 34 million people in the United States have asthma. Regardless of the availability of treatments, it remains inadequately controlled among many. Each year, asthma is the reason for nearly 500,000 hospital stays, and its treatment costs billions of dollars each year. The goal of the treatment is to control the disease. One of the most important things when evaluating patients with asthma is trying to help them understand that the goal is to control and not cure. And the reason is because asthma is a condition that is lifelong. Still to this date, we don't know what exactly causes asthma. We know what triggers it, what makes it better, what makes it worse, and what exacerbates it. But we really don't know an exact cause for it. And so without knowing the exact cause, you really cannot uh, cure the disease. Presently, we have many different types of medication to help us control asthma and many different uh, methods of following if the patient is being controlled or not. Asthma is commonly divided into two types, allergic and non-allergic asthma. Allergic asthma is the most common form of asthma, affecting more than 50% of the 20 million asthma sufferers. Many of the symptoms of allergic and non-allergic asthma are the same. However, allergic asthma is triggered by inhaled allergens such as dust mite allergen, pet dander, pollen, and mold resulting in asthma symptoms. In non-allergic asthma, the immune system is not involved in the reaction. Non-allergic asthma is triggered by other factors, such as anxiety, stress, exercise, cold air, dry air, hyperventilation, smoke, viruses, or other irritants. Asthma, the way we understand it now, has two components. One is the airway reactivity, and, uh, which is the twitchiness of the airways, and the other one is the inflammation or swelling, which is really the underlying cause of asthma. And if you treat the inflammation, the twitchiness or the airway reactivity would get better. Most of the routine tests that we have today only test for the reactivity or the obstruction or the twitchiness. Very few tests test, you know, can address uh, the inflammation, and that's why it's very important to be able to monitor it. In the early 1990s, Dr. Shell Alving discovered that people with asthma have higher levels of nitric oxide than healthy individuals. This discovery led to the establishment of Aerocrine, a medical technology company focused on the improved management and care of patients with inflammatory airway diseases. Alving's discovery about nitric oxide has made routine assessment of inflammation possible, whereas before, it was based on subjective data. It's important in uh, blood vessel health, in brain health, in heart health, and in lung health. So it's really, there's almost, you can't think of an organ where nitric oxide is not involved in some way or another in the physiology. In patients with asthma, it's been confirmed now by many people that uh, patients with asthma have very high levels of nitric oxide in their exhaled breath. And that turned out to be a good way to be able to monitor what's going on with asthma since it gets better with treatment and gets uh, worse when they are off the treatment. Exhaled nitric oxide is only produced at elevated levels when inflammation is present. So it can be used to differentiate between non-inflammatory conditions and to indicate the presence and level of inflammation in the airways. There are other methods for doing this, which are invasive, time-consuming, and require specialist facilities. Measurement of exhaled nitric oxide is easy, fast, and non-invasive. We have three methods of, of monitoring asthma. There are more methods, but the three simple methods are the um, clinical symptoms. The second method um, that's state-of-the-art, that's accepted and recommended by the NIH asthma guidelines is the lung function, which, is done, which can be done in the office by spirometry. Because spirometry is a little difficult to interpret, doctors have not been using it routinely. But now with nitric oxide measurement, it's a simple, safe, non-invasive. It can be done in the office with the patient there, and um, it's one number to interpret. If it's, a, if it's high, if it's in the high range, patients can be advised to regulate their medication, and the doctor can change the medication on the spot. ENO is a well-established indicator of airway inflammation and asthma. It offers insights into steroid effectiveness. With proper treatment, it has been shown to decrease rapidly in asthmatic patients when treatment is started. And a clear dose-dependent relationship has been demonstrated between inhaled asthma medications and the fall in ENO level. Currently, 
E-N-O, measurement and treatment is limited to hospitals and doctor's offices. However, the vision is to have personalized asthma management by the patient at home. Asthma is a chronic disease. You know, somebody, uh, if you have asthma, you always have asthma. It doesn't go away. As I mentioned, it doesn't, it, there's no cure for it. So uh, if you come to the doctor and have a visit and be checked up, that's very important to do that. But also what happens between checkups? You know, your asthma can get better and get worse. So it'll be very nice if there's a way for patients to be able to know when between doctor visits what's going on with their asthma. Is it better? Is it worse? If they have new symptoms? Is it due to asthma? Is it due to something else? Evaluating disease severity and measuring responsiveness to treatment is critical to achieving the ultimate goal of asthma management. Enabling a patient to live without functional limitations, impaired quality of life, and the risk of adverse events associated with asthma. For more information on aerocrine and the treatment of asthma, visit www.aerocrine.com.